Just a quick message to say thank you so much for listening to Magical Storybook English Nanny Bedtime Stories. We now have 5 million listeners around the world and we love reading every single message that you send to us. We now also have a YouTube channel. You can type our name into YouTube or click the link in the details. So please come across to English Nanny Bedtime Stories and subscribe to the channel. Welcome to Magical Storybook English Nanny Bedtime Stories, a collection of ancient fairy tales and folklore from around the world. Adapted and read by Rihanna Meehan. Today's story is a tale from England. Dick Whittington and his cat. In the reign of King Edward III, there lived a boy called Dick Whittington. His father and mother had died, and as he wasn't old enough to work, he was very badly off. He hardly ever had anything to eat, and the people in his village were so poor that they couldn't spare him anything other than potato peelings and the occasional crust of stale bread. Dick would often sit and listen to the villagers talking. One day he heard them mention a great city called London and how there was singing and music there all day long. Everyone there is very wealthy, said one. Well, that's because the streets are paved with gold, said another. When Dick heard this, he immediately decided that he must go to London, for there he could become a fine gentleman and never be hungry again. So one day, when a large London-bound wagon, being pulled by eight horses, passed through the village, Dick asked the driver whether he could walk with him. When the driver saw the poor ragged orphan, he pitied him and agreed to accompany him there. When they arrived in London, Dick couldn't wait to look for the streets that were paved with gold. He thanked the kind gentleman and ran off as fast as his legs would carry him. He raced through the narrow streets, turning corner after corner. He had once seen someone in his village carrying a guinea and remembered what a great deal was bought with it, so he thought that he only needed a few small pieces of pavement to become rich. Poor Dick ran until he was tired, but whichever way he turned he saw nothing but dirt. There was no sign of any gold. As the sun disappeared behind the houses and night time came, he sat down in a dark corner and cried himself to sleep. The next morning he got up and walked about, asking everybody he met to give him a halfpenny to keep him from starving. But nobody answered him, and the poor boy was soon quite weak and faint. A good-natured gentleman saw how hungry he looked. Why don't you go to work, my lad? he said to Dick. I would, sir, but I do not know how to, he answered. I will give you work, said the gentleman, and he took Dick to a hayfield, where the boy spent some weeks merrily helping to bundle it up. When the work was over, Dick found himself as badly off as before, and being almost starved again, he laid himself down in the doorway of a fine-looking house. It happened to belong to a rich merchant called Mr Fitzwarren, and when the cook opened the door, she found him lying there. Take yourself away, called out the woman. We're always bothered with beggars, or see how you like being drenched with dishwater. At that moment, Mr Fitzwarren arrived home to dinner. When he saw a dirty, ragged boy lying at his door, he said to him, Why do you lie there, my boy? You seem old enough to work. Are you just lazy? Indeed not, sir, said Dick. I would work with all my heart, but I do not know anybody in London, and I am sick for the want of food. Poor fellow, said Mr Fitzwarren. Get up. Let me see what ails you. Dick tried to stand up, but was too weak. He had not eaten any food for three days, and was no longer able to beg from people in the street. 
So the kind merchant told the cook to take him into the house and to give him a good dinner. When he was well enough, Dick was taken on to help the cook. And he would have lived very happily with this good family if the cook had not been so ill-tempered. She would always say things like, Get out of my way! Look sharp! Clean the roasting spit and the dripping pan! Make the fires! Be quicker or else! And she would shake the ladle at him or shoo him from the scullery with a broom. One day, Mr Fitzwarren's daughter Alice saw the cook ill-treating Dick and warned her after this, Cook's behaviour improved, but Dick had another problem to overcome. His bed was in the attic, with so many holes in the floor and walls, that every night he was overrun with rats and mice. The next day he saw a girl with a cat and asked her, Will you let me have that cat for a penny? The girl agreed, and soon after Dick had no more problems and was able to sleep soundly. One day, Mr Fitzwarren was getting ready to sail on a ship. It was the custom that whenever a merchant went overseas to trade, that the servants should be allowed to send something of their own to trade too. This way they had a chance to make their own fortune. Miss Alice, realising that Dick had nothing to trade, said to her father, I will lay down some money for him from my own purse. But her father told her that Dick must send something of his own. When poor Dick heard this, he said, I have nothing but a cat, which I bought for a penny from a little girl. Well, fetch your cat then, my lad, said Mr Fitzwarren, and let her go. Dick went upstairs and brought down his poor cat. With tears in his eyes, he gave her to the captain. I shall now be kept awake all night by the rats and mice, he sobbed. Everyone laughed at the poor boy's misfortune, but Alice felt pity for him and secretly gave him some money to buy another cat. The cook grew jealous of their growing friendship and started to treat Dick with cruelty again. At last he could bear it no longer and he decided to run away. So early the next morning, he packed up a few of his things and left the house. He walked as far as Holloway, and there he sat down on a stone, wondering which road he should take. While he was thinking, the bells of Bow Church began to ring out, and as he listened, he heard them saying to him, Turn again, Whittington, thrice Lord Mayor of London. Lord Mayor of London, thought Dick to himself. Why, I would put up with almost anything now to be Lord Mayor of London when I grow up and to ride in a fine coach. I will go back to Mr Fitzwarren's house. The ship that was carrying his cat arrived at the coast of Africa. The local people came in great numbers to see the sailors because they had never seen people of a different colour to themselves before, so they were most interested. They gave the visitors a friendly welcome, and once they were better acquainted, they were very eager to buy the fine things that the ship was loaded with. When the captain saw how much they liked the fabrics and other goods, he sent patterns of the best ones to their king, who was so pleased with them, he invited the captain to the palace. When he arrived, the king and queen greeted him, and dishes of the finest food were brought out. But they had not been sitting for long when a swarm of rats and mice rushed in and devoured all the meat on their plates. The king sighed and said that he would give half his treasure to be free of them, for they not only destroy his dinner, they also keep him awake at night. The captain jumped for joy, remembering Dick Whittington's cat. He told the king that he had a creature on board the ship that would get rid of them for him. Bring this creature to me, cried the king excitedly. If she will do as you say, I will load your ship with gold and jewels in exchange for her. Run, run, said the queen. I am impatient to see the dear creature too. 
So while another dinner was prepared at the palace, the captain went to fetch the cat and returned with her just in time to see the rats and mice running over the table again. As soon as she saw them, the cat jumped from the captain's arms and killed every rodent in the room. The king was delighted and the queen asked for the cat to be brought to her so that she could see her more closely. The captain presented her to the queen and the cat immediately settled down on her lap and purred herself to sleep. Charmed by the cat and being informed that her kittens could keep the whole country free from rats, the king bought all of the ship's merchandise, paying ten times more than the merchandise was worth for the cat alone. The captain then took leave of the royal party and set sail with a fair wind for England and after a happy voyage, arrived safely back in London. Mr Fitzwarren had just come to his counting house and seated himself at the desk when the captain arrived at the door, carrying the trunk full of jewels. The merchant gave thanks for such a prosperous voyage and asked the captain to sit down and tell him all about it. The captain told Mr Fitzwarren the story of the cat's value at the palace and showed him the riches that the king and queen had paid to Dick in exchange for her. Mr Fitzwarren wasted no time in sending for Dick, shouting, Send him in and tell him of his fame, and call him Mr Whittington. Dick was scouring pots for the cook, and was quite dirty when he got the message to go and see the merchant in his counting house. When he knocked at the door, Mr Fitzwarren kindly ordered him to come in and told him of the good news. At first, Dick Whittington thought that they were making fun of him. Indeed, Mr Whittington, said the merchant, we are all being quite serious and I most heartily rejoice in the news that these gentlemen have brought for you. For the captain has sold your cat to a king and brought you, in return, more riches than I possess in the whole world. Mr Fitzwarren then told the men to open the great treasure chest and the boy was overcome with joy. He begged his master to take what part of it he pleased since he owed him for his kindness but Mr Fitzwarren would not hear of it. No, no, he answered, this is all your own and I have no doubt that you will use it well. But Dick Whittington wanted everyone to share in his good fortune so he gave some to the captain and some to the rest of the servants, including the ill-tempered cook. He was washed and dressed in a fine suit of clothes. He looked as fine a gentleman as you ever met. Mr Fitzwarren soon saw the love that he and Alice had for each other and agreed that they could marry. The wedding was attended by the Lord Mayor, the Court of Aldermen and a great number of the richest merchants in London, whom afterwards were treated with a rich feast. He and Alice lived in great splendour for the rest of their lives and were very happy. And he did indeed become Lord Mayor of London three times. The story of Dick Whittington is a true one and the stone that he sat on when he heard the Bow Bells talking to him is still there today. <laughs>